What is up everybody, it's John Barr with Prime Homes bringing you the market update for uh, what should have been sent out in March. And I appreciate you guys uh, emailing me asking when that report was gonna come out. Um, it, it's, it's really great to hear that a lot of people do enjoy it and do watch it. And I apologize for not getting out in, in, in time, um, but I really appreciate the emails and the follow-up to just kind of keep me on track. So go ahead and get into this for uh, the review. Uh, average sales prices in February were up just over 247,000, which is a 5.6% increase year over year. Median sales price was just a little under 200,000, but it's still up 4.2% from uh, this time last year. Sales just over 2,000, which is 3% increase from this time last year. Average rental price is just under 1,400, which is about average to last year, 0.2% increase, so nothing um, too exciting there. Uh, employment still just over 1.31 million, uh, 3.36 increase from year over year, so we're gaining those jobs. But we did lose just over 7,000 from this time last month. But that number is pretty insignificant when you look at uh, it's playing into 1.13 million people. So pretty small, but we did lose a few jobs. Unemployment still sitting under 4%, uh, it was a 3.41%, but it was a half, almost a half a percent increase in the previous month, which isn't good, but when you look at uh, the slides here in a little bit, when you see how low our unemployment rate really is, um, it's nothing too concerning, especially when the national average is still sitting in the fours, and here in San Antonio, we're sub four, so still good. Months of inventory, 4.46. Now remember, this is exactly how this is how we kind of judge the strength of our market if we're buyer and seller. When you see six months inventory, that is the balance between the buyer and seller. Neither one really has more power over the other. Anytime we're under six, uh, becomes more of a seller market. There's a lot of people wanting to buy homes and not a lot of homes available to purchase. This was a 6.6 uh, .6 decrease from the previous month, which is good, but that is cyclical to the market. Uh, as January is always the worst time to be trying to list a home. That's when the month's inventory are the highest. Uh, people aren't wanting to move around as much. Um, but this was a 1.1% increase uh, year over year. So, I mean, we're still doing well as far as month's inventory go here in San Antonio. Median sales price, you can see we're still making that, uh, that, that trend starting to head back up for the cycle this year and this was our December kind of bump like you can see in the previous market so we're going to continue to watch to see how far that goes especially when you got the Fed and everybody's talking rising interest rates um, and see how that really starts to affect in the prices. Now one thing I continue to watch is 2017 kind of did some weird things uh, that the previous years had not done where you kind of said we peaked earlier and dropped off sooner kind of bounced around at a higher rate. Uh, so I'm gonna to wanna to continue to watch that to see if um, anything changes over the long term. Monthly rents, uh, we just kind of plateaued and went flat, which is pretty typical for, you can see this time of, this time of year, I would expect to continue to start, or would soon to see this start to rise uh, as we get into the renting months. Now, for all you landlords out there, I, I say this um, when I present this to keep in mind that um, when you see a chart like this, you know that the best time to rent if you have a tenant lapse is going to be your summer months. So structure those leases. Tell your land, property managers or do it yourself. I've structured 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, seven month leases to try to make them always end around the March, April time frame. So if you gotta get in there, do some paint, do some carpet, you're hitting that market right in that best time to keep that turnover to a minimum and possibly increase your rents. So always be looking at that and keep that in mind. Unemployment rate, this is like I was saying, I wasn't really too concerned of to see that high of a jump all of a sudden because we really dropped off and uh, got under 3%, which has only happened once in the pre-90s. Um, so I would be concerned if I would see that continue at that rate and jump again for two, three months in a row. Uh, and I would be concerned that at that point we're starting to hit into a recession. Um, but I did see reports uh, for the first quarter job market uh, for the United States. We had a 241,000 jobs in the United States. So that is, I mean, really ripping and roaring for the uh, private sector as far as employment goes. So everything's still 
looking good. Everything's still moving along just fine, but I'm going to continue to watch because it seems every the, the Fed is being a little more hawkish on their interest rates uh, rise, and that might start to play an effect. You can already see it in the stock market and the things it's done this year already. Year-over-year -year appreciation. Um, this is, I've, I've really started tracking this, enjoying this, and I really want to continue to see how these interest rate rises are going to affect. So you can really see how fast this inverse back in the bottom of our real estate market here in San Antonio, we were hitting 10% year over year appreciations, but we are starting to trend down. And I really think that's coming to an affordability issue as we've seen a lot of zip codes and a lot of houses really start climbing up in equity uh, pretty significantly. And you can see that in that median sales price. When we went from a median sales price of 135 a thousand down here to I think we were hitting two fifteens uh, last summer for median sales prices. So I really think we're hitting the affordability issue, but then we also have the rising interest rates. So I would be, my mind, I'm expecting to kind of see the appreciation start to slow down unless we start seeing uh, wage increases like they are really trying to push for um, on the government level, because um, that's going to need to happen in order for people to still really pay more for homes or we continue to get more and more influx here into uh, San Antonio, which is um, highly likely as well. So now the favorite area that everyone really enjoys is where to market. So break it down by price range. And this is what I was talking about. Um, we've had a lot of homes that were in our sub 200,000s that San Antonio has always been a very affordable market. And uh, we've sat down under threes in this area for a very long time. So a lot of that inventory is really moving up into these areas. So if you're renovating houses uh, or flipping, keep this in mind and really look at your month's inventory and target your price ranges. Not to say there's nothing wrong with doing things in these higher price ranges. Just know that you might be sitting on the market, especially if you're using hard money financing or high interest and, and depending on how you structure the deal, it uh, can really hurt into your bottom line if you're having to sit on the market three, four, five, six months uh, paying those interest payments. So the best zip codes, this is the lowest months of inventory in the city where you are going to see a lot of pressure for prices to increase because there's very high demand. So houses don't last very long and appraisers see that so they're going to appraise those prices higher and people are really wanting to buy. Um, so anytime we're seeing these, that, that I mean, that's good for those zip codes, homeowners in those zip codes, and to market into those zip codes, because if you're finding houses, chances are you are more than likely going to have a price increase by the time you get through a three, four, five month uh, renovation, especially if you're selling, needing to do a seasoning for FHA and VA financing. And I always kind of, or I started to point out like 78247 here, like a year ago, this average price was sitting around, I want to say 140, 150 uh, price ranges, and now this zip code is at 193. It has been one of the top zip codes for a very long time with very low months of inventory. So you can see how this thing has performed, and it's a very large zip code along to it to the east of 281 uh, inside 1604. So you can see how having that low of months of inventory and that desirability has really jacked those prices up and moved it up. Uh, in the average sales prices. So now the worst zip codes, highest month's inventory. No surprise uh, that a lot of these zip codes are very high priced. Um, 78202, they're seeing a few that are kind of coming downtown. One thing that I have started to notice is I am seeing more of these zip codes downtown, 203, 207, uh, 220. Um, these are zip codes, especially 207. This is a very large zip code just to the west of downtown. And it's kind of popped up on the worst zip codes a few times, but a lot of times it has fallen off my list for the fact that it didn't have enough active solds on the market. Because so I kind of eliminate zip codes that, because I tracked the entire New Braunfels, Bernie, uh, San Antonio area, there's a lot of zip codes in there. So if they don't have at least 30 properties for sale, I drop it off my list because it just doesn't have enough data to really make a, a difference. But 78207 has started to get uh, enough appreciation 
that where people can list these things on the market and on the MLS and people are buying. Because traditionally, I've run comps down on these zip codes and you go two years back and a very like several block radius and you might get one or two comps to really pull off and it was very off market, owner to owner, owner finance kind of stuff. It really didn't have the technology going behind it of the MLS. It wasn't worth really realtors going in there and selling it because 3% on a $50,000 house can take a lot of work to get um, 150 or 1500 in commission. But I am seeing appreciation starting to push these zip codes up and the average prices up. So there's a lot of homes on the market, yes, but home values are rising in these zip codes and people are buying them off the MLS and that is why you're seeing a very low price here. But it's something to consider over the long term that if you can buy a property over in those zip codes and you can get some cash flow off of them, appreciation's moving that way and it is taking those home values up. So it is a very good place to possibly try to look into in picking up a rental property or buying and holding something down in those areas. So that's really it for this month. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or any questions, uh, always feel free to email me at john at primehomes.com. Head over to Facebook, give us a like, put a lot of uh, tips and tricks and stuff that we're working on currently out on Facebook and go ahead and visit over at Prime Homes. We have launched a podcast as well. We call it the, uh, the Investor Journey. Um, it's kind of our journey through our careers that we've advanced giving the same tips and tricks uh, and kind of going through our thought process on how we handle our business and how we grow and things that we currently see in the market. So head over to iTunes. Um, I know it's on SoundCloud. I think it's on every major platform for podcasts, but head over, the, head over there, check it out. Uh, shoot us a like on that as well and give us some feedback. Otherwise, um, I will see you guys next month.